Hey, this is Jim. Welcome to Silent Sales Machine Radio. Today we have an episode that's a first for us on the show. And that is there's going to be three guests simultaneously on the screen with me if you're watching on YouTube. This is one of those episodes you can certainly just listen to and and get the full value uh, from a content perspective. Uh, But these three friends are just so entertaining and they they truly love each other and they've truly built something special. They're from Indonesia, living in Canada, and they've built the most recent complete month and their business was $100,000 in sales on Amazon at a very nice ROI. You're going to love getting to know them a little bit. I'll bring them on the screen here in just a moment. Uh, But something that stood out to me was they understand very much the thing that we emphasize very frequently as part of the show, and that is business is about relationships. Relationships don't enhance business. That's understating it. Relationships are why business exists. If you don't have healthy relationships as part of business, you don't have a healthy business. And they understand that very much. And you're going to love getting to know these three, how they interact, how they've come to the decisions that they've made, the way that they've grown so quickly, uh, their strategies for the future. They're big fans of the proven Amazon course and the replans model, but they're quickly expanding into private label as well. They share their numbers, they share their story and their products, how they find them, how they've hired their team, what, uh, what kind of meetings they have and how often they meet and the decisions they make. It really is like pulling back the curtains on an exciting business that's being built as one of the many businesses in our community. You're going to love their heart. I think you're going to maybe even fall in love with these guys. They're just so awesome. And uh, I certainly can't wait to meet them in person someday. So let's get them on the screen and you're going to get to know them right along with me in this interview. I'm excited to bring it to you. See you on the other side. So Josh, Agnes, and Victoria, welcome to the show. Yay! Yay. Hi, Jim. (laughs) Great to see you guys. And for those who aren't watching today, it's a real treat because all three of them are sharing a webcam and it's just precious. I mean, these three are obviously very close and you'll see it and just they they exude the affection for what they're going to share today and you can see it on their faces. So uh, this is one to catch on YouTube if you're listening only typically. We'll have that link in the show notes at silentgym.com. Uh, but hey guys, I want to jump into your story. Let's hear it. Yeah. So I initially started the company and it was in 2019 in the summertime where I feel like I needed to do some online business. And a friend from the church, uh, Devon, he introduced me to you guys. It's from word of mouth. And I listened to your podcast, Jim. And I think I got hooked by the, you know, by, you know, selling online on Amazon. So I decided to, to uh, get into the course. I think it was like a 400 something dollars back then in 2019. And I was in the, in the middle of grad school. So I, I was taking like master's, uh, program back then and <laughs> it's been such a challenging year for me like to you know to juggle between school and business sure. so yeah apparently you know got closed the door <laughs> only a month after that <laughs> so yeah i decided to you know to quit or to pause the business and i decided to finish my school which uh i, I finished that uh, in may uh, and after that uh, I was like praying to God, like, uh, I need to do something. And it, it was in the middle of pandemic and there's no jobs and whatsoever. And suddenly uh, I felt that, oh, maybe I should go back to the Facebook page. So the the big Facebook page, the silent sales gym. And yeah, I, I think I watched a bunch of like success stories, you know, about three plans. And I decided to jump in. So right after I finished my school, I jump in to do some research about three plans. <laughs> and yeah, it was just me alone. So in May 2020, so last year, until June, I decided to to get Victoria on board with me. Yeah. And she's been such a great help, especially finding more replans. Because the key to this business is pretty much finding replans. Uh, and then get the replans uh, you know, sent to Amazon because we are doing FBA. So we pack everything into a box and send it off to Amazon. 
Gotcha. Okay. And we'll get into the role that Agnes plays here in just a moment. But where do you guys live? Oh, yeah. We live in Calgary, Canada. Okay. (laughs) Some more more Canadians. We've had a run of Canadian success stories lately. And I love it. It's almost like we intentionally said, hey, let's have a whole segment of the podcast and hear from Canada. (laughs) Oh, yeah. 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 Are you guys selling in in US or or Canada or both? What's the business? Yeah. You're You're just selling in Canada. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Which which is a fraction of the US marketplace. Exactly. So yes, hopefully, sir. I've just recorded actually right just prior to your episode. I'm not sure where in what order these episodes will be published, but uh, another Canadian who is just doing amazing things from Canada selling into the US market. A lot of the products that can't Canadians who live here in the States can't get a hold of. And if you can get them into the States. Uh, you can certainly grow a very incredibly, you, you can grow a lot bigger than you are now because <laughs> the uh, U.S. market still is the biggest Amazon market. I so, yeah. happen to live in a country such as Canada where they have Amazon there as well. The opportunities you're going to hear today apply. But I was, I was on the phone today with a guy in India who's excited about the prospects for, for uh, Amazon in <laughs> India and selling into the U.S. market without ever, t- without ever touching your products without ever having to put them in your garage and store and ship. And like, it all goes straight to the prep partner and the prep partner takes care of it. So, okay. So great. So you've got that perspective. Now you guys are Canadian based and you're growing your business. You started off pretty fast, bringing in some friends to help you out. So um, talk us through that and maybe uh, hear from Agnes on what his role is too. You know, keep the story going. You guys, uh, it's it's your show. Right. So after I I put Victoria on board, (laughs) Uh, it was in June 2020, and then we we grew so much until I think we hit like uh, ten thousand dollars, more than ten thousand dollars a month. And then I decided that oh, I think we need to organize all the files together. Like uh, so, because before that we did not have any like any tools to organize our like our replans. And I and then I talked to Agus, mm-hmm. and then I offered him, you know, if he wants to join us. And yeah, he decided to join us and he has been such a great help with organizing, you know, the files uh, into Excel and everything. So it was in August, I think, 2020, yeah? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. yeah. Okay. And I apologize. I've been saying your name wrong, Agus. I'm finally reading. <laughs> yeah, <that's right>. <laughs> <laughs> I've been sticking an N in there and there's no N in that name, Agus. All right. Great to, <laughs> great to meet you, buddy. So you're yeah. kind of the, uh, the tech nerd of the team, I take it, right? Like the spreadsheet uh, guy? <laughs> <laughs> That's it, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I was mainly um, helping out with uh, process improvement this way, like how we can be more organized, right? And planning on the time, like when we should buy stuff, right? And pack it and ship it, right? Because at the beginning, I remember when they starting, we don't have any like specific schedule. We have to buy on this day, right? Preparing on this day and pack it on this day, right? Mm-hmm. So I just come in and just trying to. Uh, because I'm helping as well, and I don't like my schedule. Will be like, oh, I have to do this, and it's like I don't like not having a regular schedule. I mean, like it's hard to control if you have your life somewhere, right? So, right. just trying to bring a little bit of like a little bit of uh, regular or order in it, you know, right? So, yeah, more organized on it. Yeah, sure, understood. Mm-hmm. Well, let's back up this a little bit. I think Josh, I'd like to hear from you for just a minute yeah, because we do a lot of podcast episodes dedicated to the replin business model. But I always like to assume that the episode we're recording right now could be one of the first one, two, three episodes that someone's ever heard. All right. So how about you break it down for me? What is the replin model? And then we'll let Victoria and Agus kind of correct anything you leave out. But if you're describing to it in, in the briefest way possible, yeah. What is this replin thing, and how you know? Why should I care? If I, I'm maybe I'm interested in wholesale, I'm interested in private label, I'm interested in this strategy, that strategy. There's a lot of ways to make money on Amazon. Yeah. Why are we drilling into this replin thing over and over and over again in this community? Could you answer that question? Sure. Thanks. So, I think uh, when I watch your previous podcast videos, I think you talk about the low hanging fruits, and I think I can refer replin's business module to it. So pretty much, you will buy stuffs from the store, like for example, Walmart or Target. And it's not, you know, electronics. It's usually it's just boring stuffs yeah, <laughs> that boring. people usually buy. And it is a replenishable product. 
That means every month or every certain period, people will buy it over and over again. And yeah, and we verify the product through Kipa. So Kipa is a software where we we will verify if the product is you know is regularly purchased at wise or I don't know certain amount per month. And we decided whether or not we go the bu- we go the product or not. So, right. well can, done. What do you leave out, Victoria? What else would you add? Um. I think um, for me, I want to talk with plans in um, the f- the finance perspective out of it. Yeah. Like replants um, for us, like um, he he as he just mentioned, he just graduated from a grad school and he didn't um, basically have a job at the time um, because he just freshly graduated. So I think and we started as um, in a replants model and replants. I think it's a good way for like a beginner very like a beginner um, because like um, it needs like a very low capital um, and you can basically it depends you it depends like how much margin you want to take right Um, you can analyze it through key buying so I think replants is like a really really good um, starting way to do like Amazon business very good and we have people that do only replants and they build multi-million dollar businesses but we encourage multiple income streams. Oh, yeah. A lot of the things we see going on in the world right now, like if if your business or livelihood is dependent on one of the big boy websites <laughs> and they decide they don't like you for one reason or another one of these days, it's like they can shut you down. And we've been talking about that for 20 years in this community. You don't want to be relying on just one platform. That's yeah. Now, when you're starting out, you, that's where you're going to be. But do you want to put all your eggs in that one basket for the next 10 years? Probably not. Although we have people who are doing that and, and thriving successfully, but we like multiple income streams. So you start, start talking about what's the best entry point. And I love the observation you made, Victoria. I look around the landscape of business opportunities in the world right now, online and off. And I don't see anything better than replans. I just don't as a starting point for someone who's ready to do the work. Right. Uh, what might you add, Agus? Yeah, I agree. I uh, want to add a little bit from Victoria. I remember also Josh mentioned like uh, why we don't start with private label or wholesaling, right? Because it has like a so steep learning curve, right? And with replants, basically, almost everyone can do it, basically, right? You just need to educate yourself a little bit, <laughs> have a little bit of like cap- initial capital, a little bit of research, just put a little bit of effort in it and time and you'll be able to do it. Everyone can do it. Everyone can do it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can do it. Let me tell you, uh, let me ask you guys this on your team. Like if you guys all decided on a Saturday, we're going to sit down and focus on one task. And that task is finding as many new replens as we possibly can. We want them to make us at least $3 per sale, ideally more than that, obviously. We want to yeah. make at least 40 to 50% ROI ideally way more than that. How many of them could you guys find in say a six, eight hour, just highly focused strategy session? Or, you know, I don't know if you'd go to stores, get online, look through your current listings to find other attached, you know, I don't, regardless of the strategy you'd use, how many could you guys come up with? Um, I'm actually like the head of the research. Um, I usually do research like online. Like I, I just go to like Amazon and I, I, I do like a customer. So I search on like the, the product that I want. And then basically I go from there. Um, you just type so in the I, brand name. Sorry. Do you just yeah, type the in the brand name. name and start scrolling? Yeah, yeah. Brand name. And then just like the product. Um, mm-hmm. and I'm pretty fast actually. I'm quite, um, I don't know. I'm quite confused too because, like, at first, like, he was the one who's doing the research, right? Because he started the mall, but and then at that time, like, he needed someone. That's why, like, he brought me in, and then he started to teach me how to do replants and uh, sorry, the research, and then he just taught me for like I don't know an hour, and then um, the that night, it's I think just three hours or four hours. I think I got like twenty. 20. Wow, that was yeah. the was first like so time fast. just after you've learned. So now yeah, you're probably like the first, first time. You're even so, you're even better now. So let yeah. let's put a number to my question. If the three of you yeah. sat down, and put your heads together, how many new profitable products could could you find? Uh, it's actually yesterday when we went to the stores. Mm-hmm. So two of us, 
uh, I think we found like 30 or 40, I think. 30 just, or 40. Like, day. <laughs> right. Yeah. And people, you know, that part of the story blows people's minds. They, th- they think you're, you're making that up. That can't be true. What's going on? It's because of the city you live in, or do you have some kind of special store that you have access to? Because what they've done is they've gone to a store picked up a can of green beans and scanned it with the Amazon app. And it came back and said, there's no chance anyone's ever going to make any money with this can of green beans. So they (laughs) set it back down and they think replens is a waste of time. (laughs) Right. So talk to that person for a minute. What, What would you say to that person? I think like my way to do it is that, um, I, I look at like a product and think like, will this person buy this? And so I have to think about like um, looking at the um, the product itself and also like design the packaging if it's if it's um, interesting enough and also um, I have like a, because my background was nutrition food and nutrition so and we uh, we our our first um, real plants items was in grocery section and so I think that really eased me out because um, I'm very familiar with food with like grocery products and also um, yeah I, I I think like the history if you know if this product is um, is familiar then it will help you out. Because then if you know that if this product is famous, then you know that people will search it on the internet. So I think you have to, you have to know where, um, like which department or which section in the grocery store or in the like department store that you are very familiar and then go from there because that will help you. And then you have, and then, yeah, like I mentioned, how I do it is, um, I go to like a Amazon.ca and then I I search on I type on as a customer and then I look at at the bot from at the bottom like you might also like this and then um, Amazon um, also um, recommend you these items and these items and I, I yeah. go from there. Yeah. yeah. So it, so it it really can be as simple, you know. Mm. And, and I don't get anywhere near as. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't have great marketing instincts. I really don't. I mean, I in college, I got C's, you know. <laughs> I, I never got A's in marketing classes. I can tell you that right now. I, it bored me. Marketing, <laughs> design, package. like I, all, all I do when I'm looking for new replens is I type in the brand name. I'm like, oh, that's a brand name I've never seen before. I don't care what section of the store I'm in. I type it in to Amazon.com. Yeah. And I start scrolling. And yeah. if I see two spatulas and a wooden spoon that are selling for $42 and they're right there in front of me on the shelf and I can grab them for six, like yeah. it's not marketing, it's not design. It's like, hey, I can turn $6 into a $42 sale and keep about $15, $20 of that. Yeah, yeah. I think I can do that. Right? It really can be that simple. So I don't want to overcomplicate it. But at the same time, I appreciate what you just said, Victoria, because you start to develop this sense and this instinct. And I bet you can kind of look at products and know beforehand. Like, ooh, yeah. there's going to be some potential here, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I bet people are looking for that. And you, you mentioned the nutrition background. I found that a lot of like no salt, no sugar, gluten-free, those, that stuff tends to do well, right? Uh, because it's a little harder to find. It tends to sell out sometimes. So if you can get your hands on it, that tends to be the good stuff. But the real power here, I want to talk about that can of green beans for a second. <laughs> Should I just walk away from that can of green beans if I scan the barcode and it comes up like, ah, oh, there's no money here? What should I do next if I'm actually looking for a good replan? You know, what next steps would you guys take? I think what I normally do is I type like a, a bunch of words at the end of the, the brand, like multi packs or, or variety, you know? Or so bundle. Sometimes, sorry? Or bundle. Or bundle, yes. Yeah. 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 Sometimes like the listing is, is a bundle and we don't know that, right? Until we type it in, so yeah. Or one thing I like to do is go to Amazon.com again, not to be repetitive, but just type in the brand name and start scrolling. Oh, and so on page cool. four or five or six, yeah. you'll come across a three pack. Yeah, of yeah. those green beans, and they're selling for eighteen dollars. Like oh, I can buy these for three. Yeah, yeah. good replant. I can make some money on yeah. that yeah. for right. sure. Yeah. Even um, and you got to be careful because just because someone lists a product on Amazon, this is where the Keepa skills come in, right? Exactly. Just because someone set up a listing for three cans of green beans and they're trying to sell them for forty dollars doesn't mean they're making any sales. 
They may sit there for a very long time and expire and you don't want to get in on that action. That's yeah. easy to, to mess it up in that way. So that's where the training comes in, learning to read a Keepa graph, K-E-P-A. You guys have referenced that a couple of times. We're not going to dive into Keepa today. Um, <laughs> we train people how to do that. Plenty of past episodes where we have dove off into those weeds, but it's a skill that's going to be necessary for you to find winners yeah. um, for sure. So, okay, let's keep the story going. Uh, you guys can take it any direction you'd like from here. I just want to keep hearing. You, you, it sounds like you jumped in pretty fast. You've expanded pretty fast. Yeah. Um, so yeah, after August, I think we we have like two shipments, right, per week. Because yeah. before it was just like one shipment per week, mm -hmm. and we feel like if we want to double our revenues, we have to double the shipment actions. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we double it so twice a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two, twice a week right now. And How many units are you shipping in on average? 500, 500 to 600. Per shipment. Yeah, per shipment, week. twice a week. Okay, and all three of you work on that? So, used to. Used to. <laughs> <laughs> after, not so much after we outsource most of them. So you have a team now that helps with that too. And yeah. they're upstairs doing it. Right, awesome. right now. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> so you can hear them up there with their tape guns and they're doing their thing, right? Yeah. And they're yeah, so great. Them, like, mm -hmm. yeah. so, so let's go over some of the numbers since we kind of introduced that. How big is your team? What are your numbers? So for the uh, packing and you know, preparation. preparation team, I think we have three people. Like uh, we outsource three people. One is like... Uh, close to full time, and then two are like part times. Mm -hmm. And we also outsource a research team from overseas, like uh, from Indonesia. So we have uh, two two of them, and they have been helping us with OA online arbitrage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they're yeah. looking for replens. Exactly. Did you guys train them, or did you have them go through our training, or how did you get those guys up to speed? Uh, we actually we made our own training so that. It is more catered towards our interests, yeah. like in terms of the ROI and in terms of what type of items and what type of stores sure. uh, we go to. So, kind, of, kind of springboarding off the products that you already are familiar with and yeah. you trained off of that base. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> it's not complicated. How long did it take you to, once you found good people, how long did it take you to train them to do good online arbitrage work for you? Like, was this a several weeks? Yeah. Was it just a few hours? It said, you know, Victoria picked it up in just a couple hours, it sounds like, and she was off to the races. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, when I trained one of them, I spent like two days of training, and each day is just one hour. So only two just hours. Just a couple hours. Yeah, a couple hours, and yeah. they're good at their own. <laughs> and I, I think, think uh, we have a of like, in the throughout the week, if there are questions, right? When mm -hmm. they're doing the research, they have question: Can we use this or not? Right. 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 Yeah. yeah. So you guys can filter through their ideas, and they get better pretty quickly, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you guys happen to see that post in Facebook I made a few days ago, where uh, I trained a store owner? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 How to find good ASINs for me? And, <laughs> I took a screenshot of that. Negotiated our payment <laughs> arrangement and everything in under three minutes. Wow. Yeah. Right. yeah. Because uh, now she's not doing keep a research for me, but I don't need her to. Right? Yeah. If she if she can find things on Amazon that she can sell to me yeah. for thirty percent of the price that she sees on the screen, mm -hmm. she should text me that image and, yeah. and that ASIN. Mm -hmm. yeah. Her training was over at that point. <laughs> yeah. I said, if you find those items. I'll buy them from you <laughs> all day, every day. I'll buy them from you. And I already buy quite a bit from her. So she knows I'm serious. And she was trained and she was happy. And as I was leaving, she was on her phone, typing in brand names into wow. her phone and walking through the aisle, right? So uh, I'm excited to see where that goes. But there's no reason we can't do it. It's not a, this is not a complicated business model. It is work. You guys have people right now upstairs putting tape on boxes, putting product in boxes. Someone has to do that part of the physical labor. But... Uh, there's always, if you're doing it right, there's a lot of good margin here. Let's talk about your business numbers if you guys are comfortable with it a little bit. And then I want to get into mindset a little bit. Okay, mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. I guess. So, uh, right. And when we started the project, we have uh, kind of like a vision in our head. We tried to hit 100,000 of sales by end of uh, 2020. And just like two weeks, uh, like the second week of December, Christmas. actually, Christ on Christmas. Christmas, we yeah. hit it. Yeah, we hit that Christmas. number, $100,000 a month. 
beautiful. Hundred dollars yeah. for the month. Hundred thousand for the month. Hundred thousand dollar sales per month. Yeah. yeah. So how, where did twenty twenty end up total sales? Three hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Around three hundred because we started in June. Yeah, started. So you started in you started June of twenty twenty. That's when you started getting serious. And yeah. by the end of the year, you would sold three hundred thousand. With the bulk of that coming as you guys were ramping up heavily towards the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Did you guys benefit from Christmas shopping? Are you in a niche where they kind of pretty much everyone sells more in December, no matter what niche you're in? But some some markets it just stays level all through December and year round. I love those. Mm-hmm. Right. It sounds like you guys benefited from the from the Q4 activity for sure. Yeah, yeah. a little bit. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, cool. A lot of like gifts were like like the yeah. like toys, cho- toys, chocolates, foods, yeah. like, like for people that sending out gifts for other people, right? Those mm-hmm. those kind of stuff. Right. And I think if you guys figure out how to tap into the US market, you're sitting on a million dollar business doing exactly what you're doing right now, except getting the products into the US. Mm-hmm. Because the, just the sheer volume of people who are shopping here. Mm-hmm. And um, there's a lot of low hanging fruit in Canada, but there's a lot of low hang- hanging fruit here. <laughs> I can, any, any given time, if I've got a couple hours to work on my business, I can go find ASINs, That'll just blow our blow of my mind. It, like there's there's no prime sellers. There's no other prime sellers on these things. Mm. The sellers who are on there are getting two hundred percent ROI. It's oh. selling thirty units a month, and there's only two other sellers. And I can buy them all day wow. for one hundred percent ROI. That's out there. Amazon isn't good at stocking its own shelves. They just aren't. They need <laughs> third party sellers to do it, and people are willing to pay a premium to shop online and stay home for the convenience. Um, and that's a perfect storm for us right now. So I think that's where you guys are heading. Yeah. Well, I, I love your story. I love your number. We, we should probably hit this just to be thorough of that 300,000 in sales that you guys did basically in six months. How much of that is, you know, what's your ROI, however you want to present it, what's your margin, you know? So at the beginning, we tried to find like, Fifty percent, sixty percent. Fifty is the the least at the beginning. Yeah, at the beginning when we started it, because we start to, I mean, like start into the part, uh, start into replants, right? Mm-hmm. Try to get familiar with it, and right now we are up to the point that because we try, we outsource a lot, and and to add into it, we have one more. We just hired one more shopper, actually. Yesterday. Yesterday, actually, <laughs> <laughs> it's his first day, right? So, and looking at the numbers, like we decided. 50 or 60 percent ROI is not not longer enough for us, right? Because we have to pay for these guys, right? So right, right. right now we try to look for 100 percent ROI products at the minimum. At minimum, gotcha. so and I think that below 100 percent, we try not to replant it, right? Because at the end of the day, we will be actually losing money by doing that, right? Yeah. So that's right. kind of our our like goal right now to find replants with 100 percent. 100% ROI. And it's not that hard to do. It, it may sound intimidating. There's plenty of examples. And that's the reason why I told my friend, the grocery store owner, the, you know, the small specialty grocery store owner who I trained in three minutes, I told her the 30%. That's kind of the number where I'm playing around with 100% margins for most products, assuming it's not big and bulky or, you know, some other kind of crazy exception. Yep. You know, if I can buy it from her for 10 and sell it for 30, I'm going to be left with 10. That's 100%. Yeah. yeah, you know, I've I've gotten my ten back, and I've gotten an extra ten, yeah, uh, yeah. and Amazon's going to keep their thirty right. percent. Uh, so you know, and, and that and that helps cover all the price of the boxing, the shipping, and the work that goes into it. So, of that money that I'm saving, you know, maybe half that's going to my team. Of that money that I'm spending, rather half about half that's going to my team. The other half goes to the business. And that's kind of how I do the rough math on this. But yeah, pretty much the same with us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. That's phenomenal. What what is your goal for 2021? For the listeners' sake, just let them know we're in, we're still in the first month of 2021 as we're <laughs> recording this. So these yeah. numbers are pretty fresh. I mean, this is just a few weeks ago. You guys hit these big goals. Congratulations, by the way. That's yeah. tremendous. Yeah. Uh, and I, I love that you've done it as a team from the beginning. That'll pay big dividends for sure. Yeah, but for sure. Uh, what's your goal for 2021? What do you guys want to do? Yeah, so for 2021, we are so excited to to work on private labels. Because uh, we want to have controls uh, compared to you know other business model, and also we want to do it uh, you know properly. We don't want to just buy random items from China and then order from somewhere else and then sell it. And 
I want to mention uh, the course from the Proven Amazon course. I think that's the the private label course really benefiting us uh, mm-hmm. to learn about you know this new strategy and mm-hmm. and thank God we have so many uh, people in our team that we can um, we can live for the replants for them and we can focus on the private label now. Mm-hmm. That's so fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's sometimes it's a surprise to people who to learn that we have a phenomenal private label training, several private label training modules, yeah. mm-hmm. different courses within the Proven Amazon course. Because they hear us talk about replens so much, they think, well, we're the alternative to private label. No, we, we just like teaching private label to people who are ready to learn it so, instead mm-hmm. of making people who are completely green go down this very treacherous path. You don't know what you're doing. You're going to spend a lot of money and buy a lot of bad product from China, like you said, and you're going to fill your garage and you're going to have trouble getting rid of it. And you're going to regret and resent the whole process. We've seen it too many times. So we like to introduce private label organically. So my instinct is, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm thinking you guys have probably found a few products that are selling well off retail shelves, other people's brand. And you're thinking to yourself, wow, these things sell really well. I wonder if we could break into this niche. Is that kind of how you guys are doing it? Uh, yeah, I think in addition to that, we're also thinking about bundling as well. Sure. So, it can be that simple. Yeah, exactly. Like Because with private label and bundle, like Josh mentioned, we have more control in our, like basically in the competitor, right? Right. So I've been looking as well on like the PAC course for like bundling with Lisa, right? Yeah, and see, it's online a free week on Facebook Live, for example. So, yeah, I just I listen to that sometimes and just review the recording, right? Oh yeah, we and love both. Lisa. Big yeah. shout out to Lisa, and she is <laughs> yeah, great. Okay. Some even some new bundle content, but the content we have, I love the I love the concept. If you allow me just to to put up my own words, and maybe you guys could enhance if you if I leave something out, but you just kind of compared bundling to private label. And I completely agree. The whole point of private label is to have a product that's just mine that no one else can really compete with me. Well, if I can combine three popular products together, and maybe sometimes you'll see, uh, like if it's food items, you'll see a recipe card. And it's a little book that I've written with some recipes, perhaps. It's got my name on the cover and I'm the only one that can get a hold of that book. And if I make that part of the bundle, I'm never going to have competition (laughs) for that bundle. Because there's a piece of that bundle that only I have, excuse me, only I have. And if you can, if you can pull that off, then you've eliminated your competition without having to go reinvent the wheel. You didn't have to come up with all the other products in that bundle, right? So that is an effect just as good as a private label, but you don't have to go invent anything. You didn't have to get FDA approval or go to China and buy crates full of this stuff. You've got your own listing and it's protected. Is that kind of what you guys are having in, have in mind? Yeah, yeah, I think that's kind of like one of those two directions. I have two, yeah. One of those two. I prefer label because we're just starting in January, actually. We brainstorm a lot during this time. Yeah. So we just, I'm just asking this, I mean, like Victoria and Josh, right? Okay, what are we going to do in 2021? So we have our AGM, right, on uh, December. <laughs> it's finally like out of the year. <laughs> we, have the, we have our AGM and to decide, like, which what, are, yeah, what are we going to do, right? which direction? You said, so we you said started, AGM? Help me. It's a general, general, general meeting. meeting for us. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So, do, you, do Canadians throw that that acronym around and everyone knows what they're saying? Because <laughs> I haven't heard that one a whole lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. So we kind of I learned some Canadian we, today. Yeah. <laughs> Other than A. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. great. No, I'm sure it's probably a very common. You got to remember, guys, I got very average grades in business school. <laughs> so I probably skipped that day. Uh, AGM, got it. It makes total sense. Yeah. So <laughs> you guys, you make yeah, a plan for the year. Yeah. Yeah. We already uh, set a target. Like for example, in the end of this month, I think we uh, we will uh, buy the product. So we have uh, we have research. We have done research like for the past three weeks, and we'll buy the product by the end of this month, and we will we'll launch it on Amazon. Beautiful. So, How many units are you launching with? Um, not yet. We haven't. So it's it's actually this yet. week, and we will this decide. Yeah, yeah. We'll decide. We haven't got that far. Yet. <laughs> My recommendation yeah. is yeah. the lowest viable number you can test with, even if you're maybe not going to make a lot of money on it. Mm-hmm. That's my recommendation. I, yeah. I'm, I'm always going to default back to inch deep, mile wide when you're testing. That's right. Yeah. Right. 
So if you can get yeah. 10, yeah. 20 units as opposed yeah. to four or 500, please yeah. go that route. <laughs> please yeah. go that route. Because yeah. you can learn so much. You can learn every bit as much with 10 to 20 as you could with two or 300. But right. the pain of the mistake, if you've made one, is much bigger if you go two or 300, right? Mm-hmm. So let's make our mistakes as painless as possible. We're going to make mistakes, but let's make them as painless as possible. Let's make the lesson <laughs> as painless as possible. That's yeah. my approach. And then you can just test, 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 test away. I'd yeah. rather test 50 ideas that I'm kind of excited about Mm-hmm. Then one idea that I'm all in and I'm putting all my all my eggs in this basket and it, it better work. Yeah. Right? I just it's not necessary to go that route. I love yeah. it. So it's, what else about your strategy before we hop over and do some mindset stuff and get some tips from you guys? Anything we left out about your strategy so far, or anything that we've said so far that you guys kind of want to fill in any gaps for the listener? Yeah, I think if I can uh, talk about the like the profit margin. Because when, when I listened to Jimmy Smith's course about the replants, mm-hmm. I think he mentioned about uh, the profit margin is one of the, or, or the, the cash flow is like really important, right? In right. replant business model. So I really suggest for those who have, you know, who have been in the business for a few months, try to find uh, uh, replants, new replants with higher ROIs so that it will pay off like uh, in the long run compared to just, you know, by like low ROI replants, which is like, it can hurt like really when you pay the credit card, like I only get this much from Amazon and I have to pay this for credit card. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, really focus on high ROIs. Like, like we really uh, recommend that. That's a great tip. You really can't lose. It's, it's arguable. If you run a tight ship, you can make money with a 40% ROI and two to $3 minimum mm-hmm. dollars yeah. back to you after everything. But that's running a really tight ship. I would yeah. love, much rather love, especially as a new seller. I'm glad you pointed that out, uh, mm-hmm. Josh, because a new seller, you probably should be looking for those 100% ROIs, which isn't that hard to do. It's just oh. not. They're everywhere. You, I, I, I've grown fond in the past few weeks of saying, drop, you know, anyone who's had our replens training, you can drop them in any store in the world. And if there's shelves and barcodes, <laughs> Yeah. Within arm's reach, 10 or 15 foot of where you drop them, they can find replens. It's just a matter of how much time you can give them. You give them an hour, they're going to find 15 or 20. Give them six hours, they might be able to find 50 or 60 and not even necessarily move more than just a few steps in that store. That's right. Mm-hmm. Because products are listed in multiple different ways. If you go back to that can of green beans, there may be 50 listings that involve that can of green beans. They're not all going to pop up with one search. You may have to search different creative ways. You may have to search by the menu, the distributor that's on the back of the can. You ever used mm-hmm. that trick before? You, like the brand name doesn't show up. Let's see who distributes this thing. You flip it around and it's got this distributor in really small print. You type that distributor in and you scroll through Amazon. Sometimes like, oh, there's those beans. <laughs> Someone yeah. tried to hide those beans, but the, wow, they're getting some good profit margin out of that four pack uh, and it's selling. Um, so yeah, yeah that, those are the little tips there um, to encourage. I love the higher ROI advice is, is brilliant because you want to be showing a positive cash flow. Otherwise you're kind of burning yourself into the ground and you're working hard to do it. That's no fun. So just, yeah. great point. Great tip. Anything else from the from the rest of the crew before we move in? I, and I want to get some mindset tips. I just feel like that's a good way to go with you guys because it seems like you've got it dialed in. Probably having a vision really helps a lot, you yeah. know? Because once you know where you're going to and you realize where are we right now, we can try to start thinking like how we get there, right? Mm-hmm. And that's when we start thinking what's the end goal for us looks like, right? So mm-hmm. it makes us think like, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, it's a beautiful transition into the, exactly where I was wanting to go. Vision is a very specific thing, yeah, yeah. but it gets into mindset, right? Mm-hmm. It helps out a lot when we make decision, right? If it doesn't support our vision, then maybe we shouldn't do it, yeah. right? Or we should do it another way, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I remember when we set up the vision as well, we, we don't want to involve in this work like full-time, getting mm-hmm. our hands dirty and doing this all year long, right? So that's when... The decision when we start going to outsource that comes really easy, right? So, mm-hmm. like we, is, I mean, like we can easily get agreement. Okay, we let's go. I think it's time to hire this person, right? Or start outsourcing this, and we start from something small, like hiring one people, try it out, and in the end, like, it really helped 
a lot. I mean, like having a vision, and that's kind of like where we are right now. Like, yeah. What What is your vision for your business? If you don't mind me sharing, or if, if there's some specifics in there, sure. And, and go tell. anywhere you want with yeah. that question. I know it's a broad yeah. question. Yeah, and I think we have uh, two big visions right now. Mm-hmm. So one is uh, to make this as a passive income. So we don't want to actively manage this <laughs> yeah. in the future, mm-hmm. and which we are uh, uh, going towards that direction. And second is we want to actually we want to bless Indonesia because we all mm-hmm. came from Indonesia. Like, uh, like for example, if in the future we can uh, find like good products like from Indonesia, we can bring them over here mm-hmm. to Canada or even North America, like to the US. And yeah, we can test it out like on Amazon. And if it works, then yeah, we can really bless like the country too. So, so you want to help Indonesian-based companies yeah, exactly. with your business as part of your vision. And not only just companies, we we can also outsource. And we already outsource like people from Indonesia. So you mentioned that's where your uh, online arbitrage. Yeah. So your online are, researcher. From, from shopper. Exactly. Yeah. Ah, okay. That's phenomenal. I love it. That's... I've never heard that as part of someone's vision before, but I love it. So, yeah. so where does that, this may seem like a weird question, but I just want to dig a little deeper on that. Like this almost feels like a, it's more than just a business. It's something bigger than that for you guys. It's yeah. like a, it's like a, almost like a mission. It I'm is. reminded a little bit of um, uh, my, our, my good friend, Hector Sosa, who he loves Mexico. He loves the country of Mexico. He could move to the United States and make 10 times the money he does, but he wants to, his heart is there. He wants to serve there. He uses the products there, the people there. You know, his heart belongs to Mexico. Because when I even said one time, I was like, man, why don't you just move to the States? You're, you're, you're learning great English. You could, you know, find a great place and, you know, be in a much more secure environment and probably your business would grow. And he's like, he's, he almost teared up. He's like, Jim, you have to understand my heart is in Mexico. He said, I may move someday but my heart will always be with the Mexican people. My heart will always be I'm like, I get it. I get it. So I, I under, and I'm detecting a little bit of that same thing with you guys. Uh, yeah. you know, talk me through that just a little bit. I'm, I'm just curious. Um, yeah, basically we come here. We, we both come here as international students and we are still here on visa. And basically uh, we know that um, like there's also first in the Bible that basically says, that if you if God like moves you to you know to wherever, then you basically have to bless that. There is there is always like a purpose on that, and basically um, wherever you are, you also want to um, pray for a blessing for for that country. And we and we really believe that um, basically that um, we as Indonesians in here, there is a bigger purpose than than that, and. Um, knowing that Indonesia is uh, like a develop, developing country, we know that we have like so much potential, but it hasn't been, you know, it hasn't been tapped. yeah tapped into. And so we just want to help in that because uh, like if I don't know like a lot, if you if you know about Indonesia, but Indonesians like loves to import stuff, but actually like we have so much, we have so much good things that. You know, like Westerners or like people outside Indonesia actually love that probably they don't know. And so it will, it will, I believe like we believe that it will really help like the economy of the country as well. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's our, one of the biggest mission I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, something I love about entrepreneurs is we we kind of have this reputation for people who aren't business builders, for people who aren't have never owned their own business and tried to meet payroll and pay employees to do good work and still make a profit. Like they've never had to juggle all those pieces. Uh, they just don't get that to succeed as a business owner. You you got to be a really good person. <laughs> you've got to be because there's going to be weeks where you're the last one to get paid and you don't get paid anything. <laughs> Everyone else got paid. Everyone else, but you didn't get paid anything. That's right. That's and true. you still yeah. wake up and do it again the next day. Why is yeah. that? It's things like this vision, this passion, what it could be, what it will grow into that drive us forward. And the the world seems to only start paying attention once we're actually putting some money in the bank. But what they don't see is 
the weeks and the months and the years and the study and the, the blood and the sweat and the tears and the risk and all the companies that failed along the way, by the way, you know, they leave all those out of the story and they just say, wealthy business owner is selfish with his resources and decides not to give back. I'm like, you don't know the backstory on that guy, <laughs> right? So you guys are going through that process and it's this love and this vision that's keeping you guys going and, and, it, and it's profitable, which is why I love Amazon. I don't love Amazon because I'm a big Jeff Bezos fan. <laughs> Amazon because of the opportunity that it's created. And I'm grateful to Jeff Bezos for it because it wouldn't exist without his effort, but it's the opportunity that I love. And if that opportunity drifts and becomes somewhere else, the people I want to serve, I'm going to find a way to serve them. And for you guys, it's Indonesia. We want to build a profitable business. We want to have flexible hours. We want it to become a stream of income and not something we work on all day, every day. And we want to serve the, the people of the country we came from and, and hire them and, and get their products out to the rest of the world and build the skills to do that. Beautiful. It's a beautiful vision. Well, let's talk about mindset because you guys seem to really have it dialed in. Vision is part of that. We've addressed it. So yeah. How do you guys keep yourself in a, in a good, positive mindset and approach for your business? Because you've been doing it a while now and it's not all fun and games. You get bad news. You get bumps in the road. You lose money on products that you were hoping to make money on. You know, how do you stay positive? Yeah, I think I... I got this mindset initially from watching your old podcast, Jim, hmm. when you mentioned about the book by Rabbi Daniel Lapin. So that's the biblical business principles. And after that, I decided to have... Oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Yeah. I always keep it close <laughs> because I, I reference it a lot. For those of you who are watching, uh, you see the book. But if you're listening, I'm holding up a copy of Business yeah. Secrets from the Bible. That's the book that Josh just brought up. Daniel and, Lapin, L-A-P-I-N. <laughs> right. My favorite living author, and I have the pleasure of actually being a friend of his too. I get to, I'm one of the few people that gets to text with the guy. I've, every time I'm like, oh man, I get to text with, a, with yeah. this yeah. guy. Yeah. Especially with the the idea of, you know, a business is, is about serving others well, mm -hmm. especially other like God's children well. That's right. <laughs> so, and I decided to have them read the book. Before yeah. they they joined the team, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's really. really I finished you that, guys yeah. have all read the book. Yeah, yep. that's yep. phenomenal. Yeah, and I love the way you said it. Just the way Lappin would say is, uh, you know, God's other children. Exactly. You know, what makes a parent more proud than when if if you were coming to a room and you see your children serving and loving each other, Sorry. would you not want to reward them for that? Absolutely, you would. Well, God did the same thing. And that reward is business. That system is business where everybody wins. Yep. The customer gets the product they want. The business owner gets mm -hmm. a profit, which enables him to continue serving even more customers. And to the degree that you're good at serving, you get even more customers. Right. Profits mm -hmm. grow and increase. God built that system is, the, is one of the premises of the book. And yeah. business is beautiful as a, as a result. Um, I love, uh, I could dive off into that world. I don't think I will, but the, the <laughs> overlap between the word marketplace mm -hmm. and the very biblical principle of grace, which is unmerited, unearned favor, basically. You come in with very little, you leave with more. And in Hebrew, those two words overlap, grace and marketplace. So it's almost like God is teaching us in a little bit through business that, hey, you can show up with just a little bit and you're going to walk away with more when you encounter me. And the way we illustrate that and understand it is through business. You come in with $5 and you walk away with something you would have gladly paid $30 for. There was value created there. Whereas the business owner sold it to you for 20 and they're perfectly happy because they made $5 too. So you walk away with more value in your life and the business owner walks away with more value in his life. Everybody just won. Yep. That's what a good, open, I almost said fair, but there's no word for fair in Hebrew. So I try not to use that word. <laughs> Everyone benefits. It's a marketplace where everyone wins. And, and uh, that's God's design. So I love that you guys built that into your foundation. I can't recommend that book enough. It was a real mindset, mindset shift for me as well, going through it. I've read through it actually multiple times. So what else did you pull away from applying biblical concepts to your business? Are there any specifics or any stories that pop to mind where they, these things kind of helped shape the direction that you guys are, are taking? I think just to... I think there's like a, like a, like in the book, like about being focused, you know, you cannot shoot in all directions. 
and once you have like a like a vision and even like uh when we we all talk about the ROIs like uh it it came from the number like so Agus is like uh operating the numbers and then he told us like hey we need to get ROIs more than 100% in order to get this amount and blah 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 mm-hmm. and at first we were like huh how is that possible because we have so many items but now we find we are finding replants with ROI higher than 100% all the time and yeah, from the book, I think it says about focus, stay focused, but do not get yourself wandering into any directions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess to add to that, like, um, I think to have a mind that always wants to improve, it's, um, it's, it's a must, I guess, like in business, because like, um, we started, so it's a startup business, right? Like we never know, like, um, what's the best way to do to do with like we always kind of like okay like we try this and then i think like we always have to like brainstorm and then we have to um like if we try it and then like it doesn't really work out we need we need to be able to you know get out from our comfort zone and say okay let's find another way you know because i think a lot of people like to stay in the comfort zone and okay i think roi good um like 80 percent is uh, already good enough but if they actually want to push harder they can find better products or they can they can be at a better place before uh there than they were before so i guess to have the mind that you know, you want to improve this business. You help. You want to enlarge it. You want to, um, to make 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 it be- make it better and make it more a blessing for people. Then it will be. I think it's really a must because, like, to me, I'm I'm just sharing this because I come from like a person who who like to stay in a comfort zone. But now we need to shift from like a replants to you know like private labels. That's like some totally different, right? It's a totally different mm-hmm. approach, but. Yeah, that's like what we need to do to be to be bigger. So, mm-hmm. I I, you know, one of the questions I actually actually ask, I'm going to tie it back into the point that uh, you, something I just heard you saying, Victoria, which is kind of like specializing, right? And <laughs> but not being in your not being in a comfort zone. Like those mm-hmm. seem like contradictory messages. You need to be specialized and focused. Mm-hmm. This is what we do. We're really good at it, mm-hmm. but at the same time, you need to have multiple income streams and multiple strategies and kind of spread out your risk. Like how do you balance those two? Mm. And uh, Daniel Lappin actually told me when I, one time when I was saying, you know, I, we, because I said, Hey, I, I teach multiple income streams. I don't want to get people off of, cause he talks about the law of specialization. If you want to mm. be really successful, you got to focus in and like, this is what I do. Mm-hmm. You can't pull me off of this. This is what I'm best at. I'm one of the best in the world at this. Those are your high achievers, not the people who say, well, I can do a little bit of pretty much everything. Those are the people who wind up not doing much, right? That's the law of specialization. So how do we balance that? And for me, I loved his explanation. He said, you, he said I'm not, he, I would advise you against opening up a restaurant and a dog grooming business and a dry cleaner and investing in real estate at fixer uppers. Like at kind of multiple income streams? No, you don't want that because you're spread too thin. You'll never be an expert at any of it. But he said, what you guys are teaching and, and what we communicate, and I don't know if I've ever shared this or not, but I've, I've had it in mind certainly as we've, as we've built our programs is very organically, you're changing these, he, calls, he called them tributaries, which is, he's got such an incredible vocabulary, but these little thin streams that turn into, you know, slightly larger streams that slowly join a river that slowly flow into a much bigger body of water. Like that's the way to think about the multiple streams. They connect and merge. So you guys are talking about private label being tacked onto a process that's already working. You're not abandoning that process. They're not separate entities. But over time, they complement each other, and the relationships that you're building complement and overlap. And you've got this kind of system that's operating. It's not completely different universes that you have to bounce back and forth between. So you're still staying specialized, huh. but you're also tacking on new people and new opportunities to what you know is working, right? And and I love that visual. Hopefully, that helps someone, and and hopefully it helps you guys too, because. One of the next most obvious things you can do, and this door is open not only to you guys, but to anyone who hears our podcast. After you start succeeding, the doors are wide open. If you have a teacher's heart, for example, to start a new income stream, which is, hey, teach others what you know. 
we got a lot of people who would love to sit down with you guys and some of them may even contact you. But hey, talk me through this. Mm-hmm. And the only way to know they're serious is if they're willing to pay. And if they're willing to pay, that's another income stream that very much complements. It'll sharpen your skills. Right. It'll mm-hmm. be helping them build their business, right? Mm-hmm. So that's tacking on multiple income streams to this one main river that, that is flowing in, the, in one direction. Um, does that resonate with you guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's a neat yeah. visual, huh? <laughs> so, all right, let, let's keep talking about um, mindset. What else comes to mind? How do you guys keep your minds, you know, focused? And you guys seem to get along well. Do you guys ever argue or fight? Has it ever gotten like a little ugly around there? I think we always, uh, like, we always uh, get things like, uh, like discuss. We always discuss something if mm-hmm. we have like some agreements, and then we always we don't hold grudges. So. <laughs> and that's important. Yeah, I like what Victoria mentioned. Like, you don't stop. I mean, like. Being flexible, right? Because as a startup, I remember every week we have something new. Oh, yeah. Almost every week. It's either we have new tools. For example, we use, um, we use uh, before, before I think we don't have any master file, right? When mm-hmm. we, like replace management system, basically. Yeah. So we started that, we built that. And then we start having people coming in. We start having UPS coming in to pick us our package. That's kind of like... One of the such a big one, one, one of the things that I remember that I really am pretty happy. We don't have to leave like twenty boxes, right? To yeah. the UPS. Yeah. So there's always something new with us and and we change the process. And maybe the other mindset that I can share with is uh, how to say this. Uh, see what you have and try to give your best with what you have, basically. Sorry. Right. Mm-hmm. I know like like me, I don't I I probably am not good at this, but maybe one of these guys is good at it. So I would not try to, I'm not going to do as bad as them. So I'll just let them do it. Right. But I know I'm good at this, but so that's why I'm going to do like 110% on this. So mm. I think they are also the same, have the same mindset as well. So we're here to support each other basically. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah if, if you understand the lesson, again, to reference the book, you know, the Daniel Lappin that we all enjoyed so much, business secrets from the Bible. And, and one of the primary lessons is business was given to us to enhance relationships. Mm-hmm. That's the purpose. According to the Hebrew tradition, according to the biblical tradition, according to the 2000 years of, of the world's longest longitudinal study of the way business and money works, we, there's been no other culture we've been able to watch that long and study the way they do business, finance, and how they integrate relationships, their their whole culture is built on this and they've succeeded wildly. That's why we study them. There's no other culture that does that as aggressively as as keeps in mind, business is about relationships. So the people you work with are some of the tightest relationships you're going to have in your life. You know, you're going to have your spouse and your kids and then it's the people that you do business with that that you're doing trade and exchange with and building something. So to have it dialed in that you guys have a common vision, that there's, I detect a lot of humility and cooperation and willing to go above and beyond. Uh, it's the same things that make for a good marriage. The same rules apply, right? Mm-hmm. If you say, okay, well, this is a 33%, 33%, 33% operation. And if someone drops the ball, you are probably going to have to drop you. If you apply that to your marriage, would that work? No. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> There's no such thing as a 50-50 marriage. It's always 90-10. It's just a matter of who has the 90 at any given time and in, in, in what area, right? It feels out of balance constantly. That's by design. That's the journey. So I love that you guys are saying, hey, I'll, I'll go above and beyond for these guys. Uh, it's great to have a team that you can do that with. It just, uh, it just resonates from you guys. I can tell. I, you guys feel like a very safe bet to me. And the, the biblical principle of a cord of three strands is not quickly broken comes to mind seeing you guys on the screen too. Have you ever looked at that and, and thought of that with the three of you? Yeah. yeah. That's, right. That's, really right. That's a good script because yeah, there's a nice balance there. So, you know, and some people do this alone. I'm not saying they're doing it wrong, mm-hmm. but there's value in the team. Looking forward to seeing those same people doing life together and help me understand these relationships a little bit. How did you guys meet? How do you know each other? What's the, what's the background? Well, so we guys... Um, uh, we both partners. So 
boyfriend, girlfriend. And <laughs> third wheel. <laughs> third <laughs> wheel. Is that what you said, Agus? Third wheel. <laughs> I guess on the weekends he just sits at home and waits for Monday so he can see his friends again. And doing research. No, just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. Oh, I love it. Yeah, because I knew people were going to be a little curious. You guys are just, uh, you guys are amazing. You're so fun to hang out with. I'd love to have you at a live event when the world gets back to normal and healthy. Mm-hmm. I'd love to see the three of you just walk up and get a chance to shake your hands and, and if we're allowed to hug again legally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We do more hugs and handshakes when the world's under normal conditions at our events. Sure. But mm-hmm. uh, And I'd love to get to know you guys. But what else do you want to share? If there's anything else, you know, we're going to start landing this episode soon, but what else would you guys like to share with the listeners? Anything come to mind? Yeah. Um, if I can share something uh, about this business, I think... It comes to when it comes to like making profit. Make sure you you write that down. So don't just buy things and then until you cannot pay it off, like at the end of the month. <laughs> so make sure you write it down. And I think if you if you grow it slowly but surely, I think it's much better than when you grow like really fast and then put in so much like uh, you know stumbling stones. Or, uh, yeah, I think just make sure you you record it down, like how much you buy for these stuffs and what's the ROI and what's the what's the drop uh, for the replants uh, sorry for the for the keeper graphs keep we have yeah. everything recorded mm-hmm. so when we make decision about like you know how much stuffs we buy every month or even every week we know like how much it is mm-hmm. so always yeah. have it recorded like yeah know your numbers yeah know your know numbers, your numbers. It's so foundation. We have our, yeah, and we have our meeting every two weeks. Every time we get a payment from Amazon, we kind of like a, a budget review. Mm-hmm. Like how much we spend on the inventory, how much we spend for the for the labor outsourcing, right? How much we spend for the other other stuff, right? So that's kind of like things that and how much we're going to spend the next week. Yeah. All right. So know your numbers and then keep track of it, right? Keep track. Use Excel, I think it's the best way. We use Excel still. <laughs> so, yeah. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anything else, Victoria, from you? Anything else? Comes uh, to mind? I guess, like, I think praying is one of the things that's, that's really help us. <laughs> <laughs> Did like, you say yeah, praying? Yeah, guys, it's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, that's guy done. Yeah. Um, you can always like um pick things up by your own minds, but like without his guidance and favor, like it, it will not be as good as how you buy it to be. Mm-hmm. So praying. Praying, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I even I, and I wonder if I'm the only one, I'm probably not. Um, uh, you know, when I set out to find some new product. I'll find myself often at a literally a fork in the road. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go spend a few hours and just find a bunch of new ASINs. I know what all stores are that way. And I know what all stores are that way. <laughs> but I don't know which way I'm going to go quite yet. Like, and I'll just yeah. say, hey, God, you know, lead me. Let, let me know. And then, like, this happened to me yesterday. You'll love, you guys will love this. I just, I just <laughs> popped in my head. I haven't even told my wife about it yet. Check this out. <laughs> so I was doing that little prayer and I was going to spend some time looking for new ASINs yesterday. And you know how you get a bunch of uh, junk phone calls on your cell phone, right? <laughs> and they have all different area codes on them and all different places in the world and in the country. And you're like, I don't, who answers their phone anymore? Nobody in the United States answers their phone anymore because <laughs> odds are it's a spam call. Yeah. Well, I was getting a spam call from the city in the direction that I was like, mm-hmm. should I go this way or this way? And I'm sitting there eating my dinner in my car. You know, I got a little <laughs> quick meal. And I got a spam call. I'm like, well, I guess I know which way I'm going now. <laughs> it was the city that was that way. <laughs> like, that's where I'm going. And I found some great stuff. Right? Oh, wow. Okay, was that God? <laughs> yeah, I think it was. To our, to our friends who don't believe in such things, ah, oh, just a coincidence. Okay, but again, in biblical language, there's no word for coincidence. There's no such thing. In the, in, the, in the Hebrew language, there's no word for it. In the Bible, there's no word for it because it doesn't exist. God guides us. And so if you give him the chance to lead you through prayer, I encourage, hey, you know, mm-hmm. God, guide my business. I give it to you. Lead me in this thing. And just watch what he does. Mm-hmm. And, and what he's going to do is he's going to improve your relationships. If you give your business to God, the way you know you've done it or not is you look back and you're like, wow, my relationships are so much better now. Because that's his plan is good relationships. If your relationships are getting worse as a result of your business, you're not doing it right. 100%. 
right? Would you guys agree? So, and prayer is a way to fix that. I love it. Great point. Good one to end on for sure. Well, you guys have been a pleasure. Seriously, I kind of wish I could just end this episode and I'm like, hey, what are we doing for dinner, guys? Let's hang out for a while. <laughs> It'd be so great. Because uh, it, it just really resonates with me, your heart. Um, so thank you for being part of the show today. And thank you, thank you so yeah. much. And I, I think the listeners are really going to benefit from it. And I've got to have you guys back. At the point that you hit 200,000 for a month, would you come back and be on the show again and give us an update on how you got from where you are now to, to there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, pleasure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Get on my calendar and share the new lessons, um, yeah. and then fill us in on where we're at now. Uh, because uh, you guys are you guys are awesome. I have to do more of this three person team thing. This is <laughs> great. This is this is a first for the listeners. We've had over three hundred oh. episodes, and I don't think we've ever crammed three people onto this webcam before. So <laughs> it was a pleasure for me and for the listeners and viewers, I'm sure as well. And as a reminder, if you're watching us on YouTube right now, most of our episodes uh, episodes are listen only. And that means you're missing out on a whole bunch of good stuff if you're only watching us on YouTube. Most listeners consume our audio content. So jump over to silentgym.com and see all the other great episodes. People all over the world and making up this community of 62,000 plus people in our free Facebook group. Uh, Just a very special community. I'll, I'll share this with you guys. We've been talking to somebody who's help, starting to help us possibly do some paid marketing for the first time ever. Like we've grown this fully organically for 20 years mm-hmm. and we've never done paid marketing for this podcast, for our courses. For Like we've played around a little bit here and there. We're starting to play around a little bit. But he came in and he's been in the industry for a very long time. And he looked at our community for about a week. He and his wife studied it. And he said, there's nothing like this in the world. He's like, you guys have never run any ads? Like, no, we, we just teach people how to succeed. And when they start to give up on themselves, we encourage them not to. And we encourage them forward. And it's a community. It's not really a central figure that's driving the show. It's, it's a community that believes in sharing ideas that work. You know, success is like candlelight, not like cake. That whole concept, like we built a community based on that. And he was just floored. He said, I've never seen anything like this before in my life. It's incredible. Because, and you guys are part of that, the success stories, you you spent just a few dollars and you build an incredible business with people that you love and trust and relationships are being enhanced. That's what we do here. So thanks for illustrating that today, guys. I love it. And for the listener's sake, we'll have another episode again real soon. Thanks for giving us a little bit of your time today. Thanks to our guests today as well. Can't wait to get them back on the show. But uh, be sure to jump to silentgym.com. Sign up for notifications on new podcast episodes, our free Facebook group, our free email list, all that stuff. Leave us a thumbs up or a love. Subscribe wherever you're at. We sure appreciate those reviews as well. That's how you can pay us back for this episode. If you enjoyed it, leave us a review somewhere if you would. All right. God bless the business building warriors, including my new three friends. Three friends I can't wait to meet in person someday. Uh, we'll do another episode again real soon. 